Hey guys, I'm Mike, and on today's Frankenstein Tech Series, we're going to be talking about valve springs. All right guys, welcome back. Like Mike said, today we're gonna to be talking about valve springs. Now, what exactly does a valve spring do and why is it so important? So Gavin, the basic reality of why valve springs are important is because they control valve motion. That is the end all be it. That's gonna be the video guys. Thanks a lot for joining us. Just kidding. Um, basically, so valve springs control valve motion. We know that. There's lots of different shapes and styles as you can see in front of us, and they all serve a specific purpose or a couple of specific purposes. Now, what you're trying to achieve, what engine you have, and what you plan to do with that engine comes down to what you're gonna select, and hopefully today we can help narrow that down. Now, there are plenty of different shapes and styles here of valve springs, anywhere from a very straight up and down single spring all the way over here to a dual conical or a triple spring. Now, because you basically look like you're from the 70s, let's go ahead and start off with the old school stuff. Well, thanks, Gavin. Basically right here, starting off, this is the original concept of a valve spring. And it, this was used obviously in flathead Fords, early racing engines such as those and the Offies. They all used this style and every valve spring along this entire lineup here all have one common enemy and that is harmonics. Harmonics is what causes a valve spring to break other than collision. And right here, early on, racers were RPM limited because they only offered this design. Now they offered them a little bit taller, maybe a little bit wider, maybe thicker spring, a little bit different pitch as well, but they all still had the same common enemy. So the idea was afterwards, from going from the single design right here, we went over to a single with a dampener. Now the dampener, in here is not necessarily going to add or take away any kind of spring pressures or anything like that. It is simply used to aid in the harmonic tuning of a valve spring. As you can see here, the two the differences between a single and a single with a dampener is you see this little sleeve or shave, whatever you may want to call it, that is coil bound all the way around. Now, moving on from there, we get into some early 90s technology. And this was developed by PSI. This is actually a PSI 1511 designed for stock eliminator competition. This is a beehive style spring. It's also really popular on the street for lower lift guys. And the idea was to take this straight up and down design, but also go into with a valve train system that's a little bit more rigid. We're getting less deflection out of rocker arms. We're using bigger push rods. And this was originally, this idea originally came from PSI as an idea to extend life on valve springs and cup engines in the early 90s. And as you can see, it is a little bit different color. We're gonna get into that stuff a little bit later on today. But the idea is with this shape of going straight up and down and then into a little bit of a beehive, it's gonna have slightly lower seat pressures, which is going to make the valve events when we open the valve and when we close the valve, which are very two crucial events, obviously, where it has lighter seat pressure. So we're not beating up all those nice fancy valves that we showed off in one of our earlier videos. And we're also not beating up the seats, which we've also talked about. Now, going on past that, we get into modern today technology. I mean, this is only a couple years old, at least that it was released to the public. I know they worked on it for a couple years from comp. Why don't you go ahead and tell us about that conical right there? Now this spring here, it's a conical. It kind of looks like a Christmas tree. Now this design, or I'm sorry, this idea was, was introduced years ago and it was really kind of a complete failure. It was a huge piece of junk. Later down the, you know, the road comp, Billy over at the comp uh, and his guys, they started, you know, Spintron testing, dyno testing, and then just really diving into this conical design. Just like a beehive, it's smaller on the top than it is on the bottom. And the way the spring works is as it goes down, you have a progressive rate uh, in the spring pressure, but it focuses all of that pressure directly down the middle of the spring rather than having a dual or a single spring that can kind of wiggle as it goes up and down. 
basically it walks around a little bit. And uh, as we were looking earlier, like Winston Churchill said, the further we can look into the past, further we can see into the future. That's what the guys over at Comp did. And honestly, this design has worked very well for many of people. Now we move over to a different design. We're gonna step a little bit further back in time and we're gonna go to a dual spring with a dampener in it. That was a non-interference fit. You'll notice down the line here as we kind of move along, some of them do not necessarily uh, come apart so easily. You have to press and pull a little bit harder, but this is what's called non-interference fit. And it's an outer spring with a dampener in it, followed by a smaller inner spring. Now, this is mainly used in bracket race engines for small block Chevys. A little, little bit lighter valves, you need more pressure at the seat and open to control these pretty aggressive rates, but it gets the job done. It's been around for a long time. People continue to use it mainly because it's really affordable. It works. You basically know the lifespan of it as long as you don't use a three-step in the burnout or sit on the two-step for too long. From there, we progress into modern day valve spring development as far as these two different dual springs. Now they look very similar. They have similar outside diameters. They have similar free heights. They also go on to similar install heights. They're both made by pack. They're, they are different colors. And once again, we're going to get into that in a little bit. But Gavin, why don't you tell us a little bit about this guy compared to this guy here? So this spring here is our pack spring that we make. Uh, I'm sorry, that pack makes specifically for our uh, cylinder heads here offered at Frankenstein. Now, as you can see, it's got a couple different colors. Like Mike said, we'll dive into that here in just a second. But this is going to be our hydraulic roller uh, 700 lift valve spring. Like I said, hydraulic roller, but this one looks exactly the same, just has a different finish, right? This isn't a hydraulic roller spring. This is going to be our PAC 1238, 1238X solid roller valve spring. These can fit in the same kind of heads, they're installed at the same valve heights, but two di completely different applications. Hydraulic roller street, or maybe a little bit more aggressive, and then you got more of a race car. It can still be a mm -hmm. street application, but you are gonna need to adjust valve lash and so on. Now, granted, these two look the same and everything, and we're gonna uh, later on go there to a spring tester and kind of show you, but the differences, while they look the same as far as shapes and almost even sizes, to be honest with you, the things that make them different are not what meets the eye. Moving a little bit forward here, we've got some, some space age technology stuff here. <laughs> this is by far the coolest valve spring, if you ask me personally, on the market. I love it a lot. We get to use it on a couple of really unique projects, including Ben Strader's 350 inch, I call it the Loch Ness Monster. That makes 950 horsepower. And this is a dual conical spring. So this takes all of the ideas over here that were already proven on this spring and this into right here. Now, granted, we can use this valve spring for from somewhere between 800 thousandths of lift to we're experimenting to possibly trying to go to an inch. We can run tighter coil bind with this design as well as we can have lighter seat pressures, which means one thing, more control of the valve train without beating parts up. That's the idea behind this new idea in valve springs, this new motion in valve springs, where we're going as far as development from all three of these companies between PSI, PAC, and Comp. We want to get more RPM out of engines. We want to have less downtime, which means more cycle time. And we want more insurance as far as what we're buying so that way it doesn't drop a valve or break a spring, drop a valve, crash it into the piston and ruin the whole motor. Now something, a valve spring that is used today as far as really high end applications. I'm talking 8,000 horsepower. I'm talking 10,000 RPM. Durability is not a question. We know it's gonna, maybe this part may not fail, but we've only got about 850 other parts that might fail. So what's one more is this triple spring. Now, Gavin, this thing is a monster. Why don't you tell me a little bit about this idea and really what it's used for? Well, like Mike said, it is a triple spring. This is just exactly the way it sounds. It has three valve springs uh, combined basically into one. Uh, you have your inner and you got your middle one and your outer spring. Uh, 
with more valve springs, naturally you're gonna get way more pressure. Um, the upside of having multiple springs is, let's say if one breaks, if you're working on a beehive or a conical or a single or whatever, and one, you know, one of these coils breaks, you're probably gonna drop a valve, you're gonna bend a valve, it's gonna be bad. If one of these breaks, you still have the other spring or the other two springs inside holding that valve open so you don't damage parts. Now you're still gonna get a misfire or something like that, but uh, definitely saves your motor. These are gonna be used in NHRA, uh, comp, super comp, um, top fuel, funny car. You're rarely gonna see any of these in any cylinder heads because they're just a whole nother world of valve spring. These yeah. things, when they're open, when the valve is open, these things can see anywhere from 1200 to 1600 pounds of pressure. Right, and we're talking inch, inch 100. Inch 200. Inch 250 yeah. Yeah. of lift. That means that we are opening the valve from the seat an inch and a quarter. Go out and get your tape measure, check that out real quick. That's a lot of lift, okay? Now we've talked about it before, we've mentioned it, or excuse me, we've mentioned it a couple times, but all these different colors, all these different materials, things like that, what do they all mean? Let's cover that now.